blend shapes. What is what is blend shapes? Uh, blend shapes are also known in uh, in the industry as uh, uh, mesh morphs. It's a it's an interesting way of uh, giving a more organic movement to shapes and characters um, to whatever you have here in. in and uh, uh, <clears throat> the basic principle behind behind the plane shapes is to move the mesh vertices and to keep track of these movements so that the user can interpolate between the two different states. Right. So the two different states would be the original state and the blend the blended state or, or morph morph state. A uh, simple way to explain this is uh, by this ball that I have in front of me. Okay, so this is a regular ball that I sculpted in Creator. Uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it's mesh full. And I have already created two different blend shapes for it. So the, the principle that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to present to you guys here with this ball is to actually animate this ball in such a way that it represents as if the ball is reacting in a cartoony way. Say it's being dropped onto the floor and it's following an animation principle of uh, squish, squish and stretch. So in this case, this ball, um, let's say you just drop it from a, from a certain distance to the floor. And as it's dropping down, you would say that the gravity, gravity is affecting it. So by, by using blend shapes, I can alter the, the shape of the, of the object to make it sit in a squishier state like this, so, so that when it's coming down, it looks like gravity is pulling from the bottom and everything else is coming along with it, right? And as soon as this this uh, uh, ball hits the surface, it would it would stretch to to it would squish to to horizontal sides, right? So I will manipulate the plane shape on this and go back to its original state and apply a second plane shape that would squish the the object as if it's hitting the ground, right? So this animation that I just created with these two states. I interpolate between, interpolation means uh, changing between the original state and the morph state. In this case, the morph state is uh, a flat uh, squish state, and the other state, it's, it's a pull stretch state. Uh, most of the animators in the industry use uh, plane shapes uh, like this to give uh, uh, life to physical objects like like a ball, or uh, in other cases like um, organic characters, fa uh, facial features, uh, more more explicitly. So uh, this is a simple example, but I'm gonna take it to uh, the next level and show you guys uh, how to use blend shapes in an organic way with uh, any characters that's been created. So right now I'm gonna load a different project. This is a sculpt that was made by our own artist, Ian. So this face, I previously uh, added some bones to it. Like you see here, the backbone. It, this is just for manipulating the jaw. This is just to show an example of how to animate in th using the rig and the blend shape itself, right? So in this case, I already have this bone it has been uh, skinned to, to the jaw. So if I move the bone, as you can see, the jaw moves along. And I can create different expressions according to that type of skinning, right? So I can make it like if it's talking. But this is just using the, the regular rigging and skinning. Uh, as opposed to when you, do, when you use plane shapes, you can actually give this face more expressions. Than, than the regular one you would give just by doing the up and down with the, with the bone. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the lens and what, I, what I'm gonna animate right now is I'm gonna open uh, the eyes and try to do a couple of expressions so that you can see the difference between uh, its normal state and its uh, blended state, okay? So in this case, this has already been skinned. So as you can see the This is already skinned and blended. So I'm opening her eyes now. And 
then on the face, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to create a smiley face or smiling. So what I what I'm gonna do here is on the blend uh you on the blend shapes uh, UI, I'm gonna add a new blend shape, and I get a new layer onto the onto this. There was a there was initially a, a layer, so I'm gonna delete both layers. I'm gonna create a new one, and in this one. In order to edit the the vertices that I'm about to I'm about to move, I need to click on Edit here, and now I'm able to modify this as I please. So, so in this case, if I wanted to move the nose, I, I could pull it outwards, and now I made it like a longer nose, right? And if I click Apply, so it would go from its regular state to its very big state. The good thing about it is that it, it's animating the vertices without changing the mesh itself. So you can actually, I can actually make this character change its facial expressions as well as its facial features altogether. So I can, let's say, if you want to go to the extremes on the, on using blend shapes, I can actually like grab this character and give it horns. So let's let's try that just 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 for playing around. Um, I'm gonna create another blend shape here. And this blend shape is going to be in charge of creating the character's horns. But I want this, this face to have symmetrical horns. So what I'm going to do is enable the symmetry mirror tool here. All right, so when I enable it, whenever I modify the shape, it's going to be modified right at the center outward. So I'm just going to grab here and I'll pull outwards and do some sort of horns like this right and as you can see it now has horns and then let's do apply here and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna alter uh, the shape so that it looks a little bit more uh, like a demonic uh, type of character so let's just grab another blend shape here or actually, what you can do is I can I can go back to the uh, to that blend shape where I got, grab the horns, and I can also modify some other areas of it. So I can do like pull here and move downwards like this. And maybe like open this up a little bit more, pull it downwards like this, and then. Grab this area, give it a more like very angrish look, and probably pull this. So I kind of modify the whole face itself. Click apply. And now we have your regular face right here, and we're gonna change into demonic by just uh, interpolating between that and the demonic. So this is a good way to also change your character features from one state to the other. Thing, uh, some certain uses that you would have for this, it's say for example, if you wanna create a character that turns uh, from a regular person into a werewolf, you can actually use this feature to start sculpting your, your character into a more uh, wolf-like uh, character with just by moving the vertices and not changing the character structure so that when you use the blend shapes, you can actually take this character into a game and turn it into a completely different uh, character by itself without the need of creating a different character. This is very, very potent. This is a very uh, a potent feature that, uh, um, that blend shapes have. Um, so the blend, sh blend shapes can be used for many things. This is like the extreme way of using it. Um, <clears throat> okay, I could, and the great thing about it is that blend shapes uh, uh, is handled by layers, so I can stretch out the nose like that, and then on the second layer, I can add a, a second blend shape there like that, and I pretty much altered two areas of the of the character, right? So now the character looks like a very demonic with a big nose and a very expressive feature. Like a very uh, angry feature, right? 
this is in principle this is how you use friendships if you have proper planning then you can go ahead and uh, start creating something in creator uh just any of your characters that you like and then by thinking towards what are you gonna make that character do you can actually make that character start like really skinny small and make it just a huge bulky super character by just manipulating its its mesh vertices just uh, how i did with this i like uh, when you're doing it on the desktop, you pretty much have a, a 2D uh, interface, so like a, a, just one side of a, of a story, right? Whereas here in VR, you have a full side where you can actually go deep within, you know, uh, zoom like real within, and just move a particular ver vertex towards one one place, and just be very intricate on your movements and your sculpting and your design so that when the results are more accurate according to what you need doing a zoom level like this one in the in in a traditional software takes a lot of time and a lot of uh, gpu uh, it takes a lot of resources and it, it becomes very uh, cumbersome when you start to get really really close that to, up to a point where you can't really see your sculpt by itself where i suppose with uh, VR, you can actually see the whole thing right in front of you in a big environment, in a in an endless environment, and that's that's one of the great features of using things in VR. That for me, for example, becomes uh, a big advantage.